Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Ellen Sandor, Associate Director of Biological Sciences at Allergan Aesthetics, an Abbey company. Welcome to the Science of Alloderm video series. As someone who's been studying regenerative medicine and the science behind Alloderm for 25 years, I'm excited to share with you some of the discoveries that we've made during this time. For example, do you know why regeneration is such a critical component of wound healing? Do you know the numerous ways an ADM's processing method can affect the body's response once it's implanted? Are you familiar with the issues caused by excessive inflammation? And have you ever wondered why scar tissue typically doesn't develop with alloderm, as shown in preclinical studies, like it can with some other surgical scaffolds? These are some of the topics we're going to cover in the Science of Alloderm video series. The last 25 years have given us a deep understanding around the science of tissue engineering and regeneration, and we'd like to share our insights to help you make the most informed decisions you can for your patients. Alloderm Regenerative Tissue Matrix is intended to be used for repair or replacement of damaged or inadequate integumental tissue or for other homologous uses of human integument. The body's natural response is to repair wounds by forming scars. In a few minutes, we'll discuss why this is not optimal. But first, let's take a look at the wound healing process. After hemostasis, the initial phase is inflammation, which occurs in the first few days following creation of the wound. During this phase, the wound is cleared of debris by white blood cells. The inflammatory cells also release mediators to incite the next stage of wound healing, proliferation. During the proliferation phase, new collagen is deposited by fibroblasts, and we start to see a balance between the formation of a new extracellular matrix, or ECM, and degradation of the old damaged ECM. Angiogenesis also begins to take place in the wound. The final phase, remodeling and scar formation, continues over the next several months as fibroblasts differentiate into myofibroblasts and begin the wound contraction process that leads to scarring. And here's the problem. Scarring can be a suboptimal pathway of wound healing for several reasons. While you may be inclined to think it is stronger than native tissue, the fact is the functional, biomechanical, and physiological properties of scar tissue actually make it weaker than native tissue. Scar tissue does not stretch as easily as native tissue, and contraction can also limit its mobility. In postoperative wound healing, this can potentially lead to significant pain for the patient. Vascularization is poorer in scar tissue, and scarring can also cause contour deformities and cosmetic changes which in some cases may lead to psychosocial issues that affect the quality of life. So how can we avoid the issues caused by post-operative scarring? One way is to choose an ADM that supports the patient's body in regenerating tissue that's similar to native tissue, which has been lost or damaged. Regeneration is the ultimate goal we should strive for in wound healing, as opposed to repairing the wound with scar tissue. To help tip the scales in favor of a regenerative response during post-operative wound healing, both the type of material used and the way it's processed should be considered. Because the question of how do we heal really comes down to how do we respond to the materials that are implanted? Let's take a deeper dive into some of the ways the body can respond to an acellular dermal matrix, or ADM. Preclinical studies have shown us that when an intact, undamaged tissue matrix is implanted, it should be recognized by the body as self and elicit a positive recognition response. A positive response is characterized by minimal inflammation, as well as revascularization and fibroblast cell repopulation. These are the hallmarks of regeneration. When ADMs are processed in a way that does not maintain native biochemical properties, the result is a negative recognition response. The body sees the implant as a foreign material triggering an excessive inflammatory response with two possible outcomes. If the inflammatory cells are able to digest the foreign material, the ADM will be degraded and resorbed. If the inflammatory cells are not able to digest the material, the body will encapsulate the implant and try to wall it off from the rest of the body. The ultimate result of both degradation and encapsulation is scar tissue, which, as we discussed earlier, is not the preferred pathway of wound healing. So why doesn't scar tissue typically develop when alloderm is used, as shown in preclinical studies? 
The answer lies in our proprietary processing, which allows the collagenous matrix to remain intact and undamaged. In the next video, we'll talk about how this helps support a regenerative repair. But first, let's discuss how we know Alloderm gives us the results we're looking for. We ran preclinical studies in which we implanted ADMs into the abdominal wall in animals. Following explantation at various time points, we performed histologic analysis to evaluate the host response to the implant. And here's what we found. At one month, Alloderm shows the beginnings of infiltration by host fibroblasts. We also see budding vasculature in the matrix, along with a minimal to moderate level of inflammation. By three months, the collagen has begun to turn over. It's staining in different intensities, which indicates new collagen deposition from the host, as well as remaining collagen from the implant. In this image, taken at six months in another preclinical animal study, we see further alignment of collagen and fibroblasts due to the mechanical forces of the adjacent abdominal wall being applied to the implant. This indicates turnover of the matrix to a more fascia-like architecture, the transition into host tissue that we're looking for. Now let's look at the response in another preclinical study to an ADM treated with caustic reagents and extensive gamma irradiation. The lower panel shows one such material, Tudoplas processed Alamax, in a separate preclinical study implanted in the same animal model at the same time points as the alloderm implants. At one month, the dark pink staining collagen fibers are clearly more sparse as compared with the alloderm study. And note the host response to the implanted collagen. We can see the hypercellular mixed inflammatory cells infiltrate within the extracellular matrix, indicating inflammation as a result of the foreign body response to the implanted material, which will lead to its degradation. At three months, we see that the inflammatory response persists. Any collagen present is very light staining, indicating that the original matrix has been rapidly degraded and turned over. By six months, the new collagen has begun to align with the abdominal wall forces. However, it's still very light staining and much less mature and less densely distributed than in the alloderm study. There are fewer fibroblasts and vessels present with no full transition to host tissue fascia. I hope the preclinical data presented in this video have helped you appreciate the importance of ADM selection in surgical wound healing. Alloderm is processed in a way that removes antigenic and immunogenic components while maintaining the properties that support regeneration. Because it is designed to be positively recognized by the body, Alloderm supports the repair naturally. Take a look at the next video in this series for a deeper dive into the life cell tissue process that makes this possible.